Hey, 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 guys, this is Hawkeye, and I am back with another episode of Russian Fishing 4. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but we are back at Mosquito Lake, and yes, what you are seeing is correct down there, guys. That is my level. I'm starting over. And the reason I'm starting over is because I have found that with this new English translation, it's going to make a lot more sense if we do this from the very beginning as a, you know, as a team, so to speak. So I have started an all new character, avatar, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to check these things out just as if we were coming in as a new player. Now, the only thing I didn't change was my settings. Apparently, I still have to change my settings here so that we have the tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and apply that. All right, now we've got the tutorial up. And just to let you guys know that, especially those veterans to this game that were playing it when it was still in Russian, if you want to be able to start over completely, what you do have to do, and if there's another way, I haven't figured it out yet, but what you do have to do is you have to go back to the site and you have to register under a different uh, name and different email but you can have more than one account that's not an issue so I had a little issue with mine because my other email was literally I don't use it very much and I didn't realize that it was completely filled up so I had to go in and delete a whole bunch of stuff so that I could start using that uh, email again because it wouldn't allow any more emails to come through but anyway besides that that's what you have to do, and you can have as many of these as you want as long as you have enough emails to cover it. But we suggest that you become familiar with the basic mechanics of the game. Are you ready for the tutorial? Obviously, I am. <laughs> so, yep, everything's in English, and as you notice at the top, that little thing popped up. I showed you that in the very first episode that I did with the new English version. Now we can see things as they are. This is what you're given to start off with. You're given some sinkers, you're given a little bit of bait, which I believe it's like 30 pieces of, of dough balls, 30 red worms, a little bit of to drink, some Jingle Bell lemonade, you know, stuff like that. And of course the Cottage, Pat, uh, cottage Pond map. Two hooks. These are uh, 14 and 16. These aren't too bad, actually. One of the regular bobbers, a five pound super line, and this blue telestick. Now, like I tried to say before, and I couldn't show you because I was still at level 11, if you go up here, getting a little lag here for some reason, and you hit E, succeeded. It says get spare tackle. Now open up your inventory. Now you can see your Soviet Union bamboo rod. Now you can see the Soviet Union old fishing line. The feather float. A rusty hook. And they just threw that in for shits and giggles, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> A set of weights. Now I have 60 worms instead of just 30. So I think that's pretty much all they give you, but still not bad honestly and you can do that once a day you can get all of those things once a day so you can get a whole butt ton of those quill bobbers and rusty hooks and whatnot anyway let's come down here guys this spot is perfect for fishing now let's choose a rod and set up the float rig with a fixed line first open the backpack by using the I key as we've done before blah 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 all right I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the bamboo rod just because no it won't let me it does say there click icon in telestick TL 16 deck on it that's not fair I wanted to I wanted to use that one oh well that's all right I guess but we're gonna go ahead and set this up with fishing line and we'll use the five pounds since this is a little bit stronger rod I'm going to go ahead, I'll just use the regular bobber for now. 
put the quill bob around the other one. Classic hook. Uh, for here, I would go with the 16, which hooks are strange, guys. It's kind of like uh, needles. If, if for anybody who's in the medical field, the smaller the number, the bigger the the thing is, which is weird. So in other words, uh, a number one hook would be a big old hook, where 16 is a little bitty hook for like you know bluegill whatnot. Then I think I'm gonna go with a I'll go with a wine. Let's do a wine. And you, this is an optional item that will not become available till later. But it says fishing with a sandwich bait ability is required. So hopefully we will get that sometime in the future. Anyway, let's go ahead. Let me show you here real quick. Now I'm going to take that rod. If you press your U button, you can take that rod and drag it into one of your hotkeys. So you got one, two, and three. I'm going to put this in my first spot. And while I'm at it, I'm just going to go ahead and bring my bamboo rod and stick that sucker in there as well. That way it's there and I don't have to worry about it for later. And also, I wanted to see, I think here, can you start a fire here? I wanted to check before. Every time I'm recording, I get a phone call. Never fails. Well, I thought there was a fire over here, and I'm almost certain there is, but we're not going to mess with that right now. I was just checking to be sure here. All right, let's go ahead and pull our rod out. I'm going to press the one key. I'm going to set my depth to what it's telling me, which is a meter. We're using the plus and minus keys. And this is in centimeters, guys, not in inches. We do not have the English system setup of measurements which is fine because I'm a scientist so I can use them pretty much interchangeably now we're going to cast this right over here now I don't think it really matters how close you get to anything within that circle if I was fishing for strictly the carp I would want it to get as close to that grass as I could within that circle because what it says is get close to the grass, and that was something Kachi had pointed out. It's a little misleading. Because it sounds like they want you to get it close to the grass. Well, they mean close to the grass within the circle. That way you're not fighting with it. But anyway, we're just going to sit here and wait and see if anything goes for this. Now, another key thing about Russian Fishing 4. If you leave... Or you pause the game. Time keeps ticking. You see that little clock over there that's rotating 903, 904? Yeah, it continues to go. So if you leave and you come back, it's not going to be the same time. The weather's not going to be the same. It the days progress whether you're there or not. That's something I had to get used to because I had played other game fishing games and it used to be if you stopped in the middle and went somewhere and came back, it's like time stood still. Well, that's not the case here. So that's kind of important to know, especially when there we got a bite. And judging from the way it bit, I'm thinking that was a Chinese sleeper. Wait a minute. I want to do a little bit closer to the grasses. There we go. That's better. But anyway, guys, we're going to sit here and see what happens. It may take a minute or two, but the reason the time thing I wanted to bring it up is because when you leave there's a couple things that do happen when you leave it doesn't matter if you got all your rods set up or not they will automatically be back in your inventory when you come back in however if you have any fish in your keep net they will progress with the time in other words if you come back three days later you basically have three day old fish in your keep net 
and that's not good. So if you had any really good fish, some trophies or whatever, they're going to be rotten. Nobody's going to want to buy them for any decent money with, over at the fishmonger. <laughs> so that's real important to know, guys. I found that out the hard way, and every now and then I forget, and I log out for whatever reason. And then I come back, and I have a whole bunch of rotten fish in my keep net. So anyway, that's just a little advice there, guys. Thanks. Be in particular this time. Actually, I might switch over, and this will be a good time to show you how to do that. You have certain type of hotkeys within this game. B is one of them for bait. That makes it easy to remember. But if you want to switch baits, you just go over to the bait you want. Make sure that highlights, and it'll switch it. Takes it a second, but it will do it. We're going to try dough balls this time. Because honestly, I usually get more carp out of this particular pond. The only bad thing is the sunny day. Carp tend to bite more on the cloudy days. So do Chubb and a few others. And I think one thing, guys, I'm going to do in the very near future, I might do little videos on the different species and things that you can do to help catch them. And this is the real species, the ones that you would actually catch. I'm going to do a little bit of research on because a lot of people are not familiar with some of these species because they are European and uh, Asian species. And here in the United States, we're not as familiar with them. All right, we are now getting a bite. Took took a while. Okay, he is kind of interested in it. But see, with carp, you really want to make sure they get it. They... As I've said before, they tend to play around with it quite a bit. Carp are omnivorous. They're bottom feeders. They eat just about anything. I mean, not to the point like catfish do, but pretty darn close. Come on, little fella. I got him that time. See, he lifted up. That's a classic sign of the Crucian carp, guys. When they lift up, that bobber pops up. It's almost always a Crucian carp. I, every now and then it's not, but for the most part, you can usually guarantee that. See, now it says, now let's go to Mosquito Lake and try to sell our catch at the fish market. To move to the other location, open the control panel by pressing the escape key. Then click the bar with a depiction of the current location in the pop-up window. Alright, we've got our extra stuff. We've got our first fish. And like I said in the very first episode of the English version that I put out a few days ago, you can come here anytime. Anytime you want, guys. And all you have to do is shut off the tutorial, which is also done through the escape key. You go into the settings. You go up here, I wish you could see my, my arrow, but if you look at the upper left, it says Pass Tutorial. And it says yes, click the right arrow, or the left arrow, I'm sorry, and say no. And that way it you won't get that tutorial thing all the time. I'm gonna apply that, see that little thing disappeared up at the top? And okay, and then we're gonna go to Mosquito Lake. And here we go. It does take a little while to load, so just be patient. Some people, patience is not a virtue. <laughs> if you hear any kind of strange snoring noise, that is my dachshund pop poppy. <laughs> she has some um, issues with... <laughs> I don't know if you could hear that. All right, we are here in the village. And one of the first things I'm going to do here, guys, 
my my food is pretty darn low. That's the knife and the fork thing down at the bottom corner. My energy's good. That's the little lightning bolt. And my luck is squat because I just started. And my comfort, which is a little sun symbol, isn't too bad. But it's cloudy. It's a little cool. So that could go down. But we're going to come over here in this field kitchen. You can come here once a day and only once a day. Now that's once a day in game, not once a day in real life. And hit E and fill up that. And that will also help your energy and your comfort level a little bit because you're more comfortable when you got a full belly. Now one thing I will tell you right off the bat, here's a couple things you need to buy right off before you even start fishing here. This is almost like me doing a tutorial, but you know, that's what I'm doing. I mean, this is the general thing it goes to. And you notice that you have 50 silver. That's what you start off with. And I know you might want to be a little bit on the picky side as far as what you buy because you don't have a lot of silver to start off with, naturally. So the things that you really want to buy right off the bat, here let me go ahead and show you those. I would probably go ahead to floats, get one more float. I like to have extras because well, you end up having to replace them a lot of times. Things yank them down. I would buy some more extra hooks and maybe different sized ones. So I know I have a 16 and a 14. What I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a 12, a 10, and an 8. I wouldn't go any smaller than that. I mean bigger than that because honestly you're not going to be able to handle that big of a fish at the moment. Now this is important for the baits. I would spend the money and get the maggots. The maggots are extremely useful on this, especially on this map. Get 30 of them so it'll last you a bit. And you don't need leaders yet because we don't have bait casting. We don't need feeders. We don't need ground bait just yet. That's going to be for another thing that we're going to do. But we'll, I'll go through that when we do it. Now we can get food if we wish. But first, I want to check this leaderboard and see if anybody has caught anything new here. Yeah, see, we're now starting to get some names and things on here. Ooh. Somebody caught a nice chub off of Mosquito Lake. See, look at that. 2.77 kilograms. Some of them get pretty big. But most of these are Mosquito Lake, so nobody's really advanced beyond that for the most part. All right, let's go ahead and these are the absolute records. So that was just specifically. Yeah, I've been kind of interested to see how big these catfish are come. 24 kilograms, that is a monster fish. Golden tench, it's a big golden tench. Anyway, I'm getting Getting a little distracted here. <laughs> All right, this is where you exchange your gold if you happen to purchase any gold for silver at the Bankle Mat. We're not really going to do that. Now the next thing I would buy in here, guys, I would buy a little bit more bread. Bread is a real good thing to have around. And the other thing I would probably get, this is this is going to be real good for your comfort, guys, because it, if it's raining, your comfort's going to get down. And I would go ahead and buy this stuff here, the spices for mold wine. 
I'd buy at least two or three of these. And you also need to buy the wine for it to work. And the cheapest that they got here that works for that is the Chaprega Port Wine. And the reason I'm buying this is because if you drink this, you can make a spiced heated uh, drink that will raise your comfort level. And if it's raining, that's going to be kind of important. Oh, and the other thing we have to do, you really do have to do it. It costs about three silver. Come over here to administration building, pick you up a map. Trust me, you need the map. Because with you can't get the map otherwise, and with it, it you can tell where you are and judge where you want to fish from and where the depths are within the lake. All right. Now, of course, over here is the fishmonger. Now, I had a fish in my inventory. There he is, a little crucian carp. Doesn't bring a whole lot of silver. It's like 0.05. But you just click on him and sell him. Sell your fish often, guys. If you wait too long, even in game, they will go bad. They're just like real fish. When we say this is realistic, we mean it's realistic, okay? Now, I'm going to come over here, because traditionally I like to fish off this dock first, and while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and pull out my bamboo rod here, and I'm going to set it up. Now, V will get you right to whatever you have in your hand. That's the hotkey, V. And I'm going to set that old fishing line from the Soviet Union up on here. Uh, I'm going to put a quill float on this one. That will separate it out. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit smaller hook. I'm going to keep the 16 on here. Use the old rusty hook. And let's see. Let's just go with worms on this one. And I also have to set my lead, but honestly, I think I might just keep it where it is for now. The reason being is because I also like to fish shallow every now and then. But we're going to throw this out first and see if there's anything that's going to bite from here. This is a bit of a cloudy day, so... We'll zoom in and take a look of it here. Oh wow, water body record Xander, 2.199 kilograms. Corrales got the record pike. Jeez. Nice going guys. Nice going. But we're gonna sit here and see if anything's gonna bite off the dock. And you don't have to sit there and hold this. This is not like some games where you have to sit there and hold the rod. You can actually put it down on the ground. Even on the dock, you can do that. Now you have to hit zero. And there you go. Now you can get your other rod and throw it out there too. which I'm going to do right over here closer to shore. Now, it might not let me put it down. I might be too close to the other rod, so let me see here, guys. Yep, other rod is too close. So I'm going to kind of shift myself a little bit here until I can put it down. There we go. And Z, of course, zooms you in so that you can see what the baits are doing. Or the baits. The bobbers are doing. Now, since it's a cloudy day, and we've got a wind coming out from the north. That's north that way. 
Now wind's going to push all the food foodstuffs that the fish eat. Looks like we got a bite on... I do that all the time. I'll hit the wrong daggone rod. There we go. See, if you hit one or two... And it looks like he gave up on it. See, I can switch back and forth by hitting the one or two, and I can pick up the one I want a lot quicker that way, using the hotkeys. But if this had been a sunny day, I think we'd be doing a little bit better on this dock. But right now, I'm not so sure. Cloudy days change everything, guys. Weather changes things. Wind changes things. This is realistic. I am getting a bite, though. Ah! He is determined to tick me off. But, actually, that's better, because I wanted it kind of close to shore. One thing is, even if this is out of your field of vision, you're going to see ripples. See how those ripples come out like that? So I'm getting a bite now. The same thing is over here. I should be able to see them as long as they're fairly close to each other. Seems pretty serious. Up. Oh. I swear to God, he keep they keep getting getting away with it. Yeah, that one's seriously just playing with it. Now, I could pick up my rod and watch it, or I could just sit there and let him make up his mind. See, I'm getting a bite on this one now. Ooh, I got him. There we go, and that's a nice size purse. Personal record, largest fish, so not too bad to start off. Of course, my personal record is not much right now, but I'm going to go ahead and keep him. Toss this back out there. I'll tell you, the perch really do go for the worms, guys. So a lot of times close to the stock, you're going to get a lot of perch if you use worms. This one's still playing with it. So I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. I'm just going to kind of keep an eye on this fella. I don't know what his deal is, but... Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if he took my bait. No? Bait's still here. And I think I got another bite off this. Ah, there he goes. See, he was biting it, but he did decide it. He took off to the left there. I don't know if you saw him. <laughs> Little bugger. Looked like a carp that time, though. Didn't look like a perch. I'm going to come over here, though, guys. In cloudy days, I just really like the fish over on this side. But we're just going to fish for a little bit here, and then we're going to probably call this an episode. Because honestly, I've been probably taking up a lot of your time here. Now the spot I'm talking about is the spot Kachi found, and he still likes to fish this whenever he comes through here. But the important thing to note 
is when you see that stump and you get past the stump, keep going. This is kind of a hard path to see a little bit, honestly. But you need to keep going until you see first this little camp over here. There's a little tree on the right. But this tall grass that forms like looks like a little lagoon or something. This is an awesome spot for fishing for carp and for chub. And when you're first starting out, this is a real, real good spot to fish. Now you can pick your own, but honestly, if you have a chance, try over here. Especially on a cloudy day or a rainy day. And at night. Now if it's sunny, some of the other places are much, much better. Another reason I like to come over here is because there's a nice little sandy cape right here. And I like to throw my feeder rods right out here or over there close to shore for the carp. Of course, I don't have any feeder rods at the moment. But what we're going to do, I'm going to get this one out, and I'm going to throw it real close to shore. I need to back up just a little bit. And then I'm going to put my rod down because we're going to go for perch right there. And then for my first rod, I'm going to throw it right out there close to that grass, because that's where those guys are going to be. I think I'm already getting a bite on this one. Yep, 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 yep. He is... He's going for it. Ah! Lost him. Alright, I'll tell you what. Whoa! There goes my other one. on it. When it rains, it pours. Well, at least now I've got them both in my view and just kind of a good thing to keep in mind and I didn't do this earlier and that's why I messed up a couple of times I always try to put in the order that they are numerically so my first rod is to my left and my second rods to my right just makes it easier to remember where they are definitely have a carp here. Yeah, because he pulled it down and there he goes. Alright, let's see if he's on it. Ah! You little pain in my butt. Actually, let me pick up my first rod here, guys. I'm going to change the bait. Not that there's anything wrong with a dough ball, but this environment has a lot of chubs. And chubs love cloudy weather, and I really shouldn't pass that up. Oh. Whoa. Okay. All right. I'm coming. I'm coming. God bless it. I'm coming. Chinese sleeper. It's a good thing he was a little bitty. <laughs> Could have broke my rod or something. I was panicking a little bit there. All right. Let's toss that out there a little bit better than I did last time. That was a really sucky cast. Need to back up. Go to the side. There we go. And let's zoom in so we can see both of them. It looks like it's something's on it, but it's hard to... 
Let me get over here where I can see better. It might be. I don't know. Let me pick it up. No? Well, in this low light, in my bad eyes, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the other bobber on here. Just so that I can see it better. You don't have to do that. That's just a preference thing of mine. I like the quill bobbers when it's daytime, but at night I have a hard time seeing them. I just do. Holy crap, that's a Crucian carp if I ever saw it. Personal record, the biggest fish caught. <laughs> 293 grams. I'm I'm catching some monsters right, right? Good God, they I'm getting another bite, and I can see him this time. Can you see the fish? Every now and then you see a little flash. There he goes. Oh, you little pain in my butt. Had to be a Crucian carp, because they do that crap. They'll take it completely under, and then they'll let it go. I was going to say, I was surprised that I haven't got any bites on my left one. Now, at night, I'll probably have more of them, but I've got somebody interested now. Now, you can set both of them to a meter or any depth you want. I just like having one for shallow because it kind of spreads out my... Uh, the environments because some fish like to eat near the surface some like to eat near the bottom also I think I said before you can see the fish I like that I like to be able to see the fish come up and try to take the bait of course right now I'm getting bites on both of them that's the way things usually work good god at the same time wouldn't you know it Looks like we got us a fog rolling in. Okay, now we're getting some activity over on the first rod. He's hitting it quite fast and hard. So I'm going to go ahead and pick it up and just keep an eye on it. Now, if something comes up and hits it pretty hard, that's usually a chub. I th Carp tend to... There we go. We got that little bugger. I think that's a roach. Yep. And another personal record. 52 XP points. Common roach. There you go, guys. We'll keep him. But yeah, this is getting about near the end here, guys. We're going to need to end this episode, but anyway, please be sure to share, comment, like, and subscribe. Check out Russian Fishing 4. This is a great game. It's free. The only money you spend on it is the money you wish to spend on it. So you can get you can purchase gold coins and that will enable you to move up a little bit faster but don't think just because buying the gold coins and buying bigger equipment is going to make you a master you have to work at it in this game guys that's the thing that a lot of people miss this is, game is about fishing and progressing it's like a role playing game for fishing honestly god but isn't real life like that anyway guys Always remember, aim straight, cast far, and have fun, and I will be back real soon. Talk at you later. Bye.